Joining us not live now is Dr. John Schwartzberg. He's an infectious disease expert from UC Berkeley. He's also a medical doctor. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. All right, some encouraging news from Pfizer. The drug maker says it is just days away from asking for authorization for its vaccine for children. Can you walk us through that process and when you anticipate children actually getting the shots in arms? Well, it looks like um, the first step will be the FDA advisory committee, then the FDA, and from there to the CDC advisory committee called ACIP, and from there to the CDC director, and then we will get an emergency use authorization for children 5 to 11. Um, how long will this take? Unclear, mm -hmm. but we're probably talking now a matter of a very few weeks. So I think it's very likely that before Halloween, we're going to have at least the first jab in these kids' arms. Any idea on the rollout as far as where children will be getting their vaccines? Is it most likely going to be from just pediatricians and maybe pharmacies, or do you anticipate other vaccine sites specifically for children? Well, I think pediatricians' offices and pharmacies are going to be number one and two mm -hmm. for distribution, but there will be other venues as well. You know, it's been taken a while, but I think we've got this, the logistics down pretty well. Yeah, it seems like all those lines are moving pretty quickly. You know, there's been so much talk about this vaccine and some hesitation about getting it. What do you tell a concerned parent who may be on the fence on whether or not their child should get the vaccine? Maybe they got the vaccine, but they're not so sure about getting their kids vaccinated. Sure. Well, I sure appreciate parents, of course, having concerns about their kids. And on the one hand, they have concerns about the vaccine, but on the other hand, they have concerns about COVID. Mm -hmm. And when you weigh these two, the scales completely tilt towards the, the benefit of the vaccine. We're seeing with Delta, the number of kids getting infected has just skyrocketed. Fortunately, kids don't get terribly ill in general, but tragically, we do see some who do and some even who die. Um, so the, again, the scales tilt towards the vaccines, but mm -hmm. what parents need to do is if they're hesitant, if they have questions, they need to talk to their pediatrician. Pediatricians are the most trusted people for, their, for the parents, and that's where the relationship should really play out. All right, let's talk about boosters. So far, it's only for people who have received two doses of the Pfizer vaccine. Can you tell us where we are in terms of boosters for the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines? We're close. Okay. Um, I think we're talking about a matter of weeks, probably a matter of a very few weeks, maybe as short as a couple of weeks before the data is really mature enough to really pro be processed by these committees I was talking about. So I think we're... we're um, there's a very good possibility that by the end of October, maybe even a little bit before, we're going to see people who got Moderna and got J&J &J to have recommendations from both the FDA and the CDC. And what's your recommendation for folks maybe thinking, oh, maybe I'll get, I'll have the Moderna vaccine, but maybe I'll go get the Pfizer booster or the J&J, &J, maybe I want to get a Pfizer booster. What do you say to those folks? I say just hold on for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a good chance that the CDC and the FDA are going to address that. We know in Europe that they do a lot of mix and matching. They used AstraZeneca, which is very similar to our J&J. &J. Mm -hmm. And then for the second jab, they often used an mRNA vaccine like Pfizer or Moderna. So we may see the CDC say, if you got Moderna, you could get Pfizer. If you got Pfizer, you could get Moderna. If you got J&J, &J, you could get Moderna or Pfizer. That, again, we'll just have to wait. And you know, something about waiting. Um, I know that I got Moderna and I'd like to know what the CDC and the FDA are gonna recommend and people who got J&J &J feel the same way. Right. But remember that we've got really good protection against what we really care about mm -hmm. and that is hospitalization and death. We have that protection right now. So continue to do the non-pharmaceutical interventions like masking and social distancing and not getting together in big crowds until we until you hear about what the recommendations are for the next round with mm -hmm. Moderna and and J and J. All right, Dr. John Swartzberg, thank you so much for your insights and for joining us this evening. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay.